Everyone has had this moment while playing video games. Oh, and I have to do the whole level over. That's just great. It's a really fun game. When you think, hey, I didn't deserve that. But got a game over in the process, you're taken all the way back to Hyrule Temple. And it just feels like the game is being unfair. How was Mega Man treating you? Um, salty and unfair. I most recently felt this way on my first playthrough of The Lost Vikings. Now I have to start the whole level over because I made one mistake. Players need time to learn how to play the game. They need to be able to make mistakes. Today, we are discussing why games feel unfair by looking at The Lost Vikings and how it made me feel like I couldn't make mistakes. The Lost Vikings is a puzzle platformer where the player controls three Vikings that have been abducted by aliens and are trying to find their way home. To explain the game mechanics and some of the unfairness, we are going to take a close look at the cavern stage. First thing we encounter is a snail enemy. So we call upon our first viking. Olaf has a magical wooden shield that can block all attacks and can be used as a parachute while falling. If we position him in front, he will protect all the vikings from the snail. To remove the snail, we will utilize Balrog. He's equipped with a bow and a sword to remove enemies that are in the way. The next obstacle is a stone wall. For this, we need Eric. Eric must have been training with Hercules because his way of dealing with walls is to use your head ramming them at full speed to knock them down. Next, we have a statue that will shoot fireballs. We will block those with Captain America, but then a caveman enemy ambushes him, so we need to quickly change to Green Arrow to have him squabble with the caveman. After this, we collect a red key and use it on the red lock to lower a bridge. On the other side are two more cavemen from the Sonic the Hedgehog school of fighting. These enemies are obnoxious because they must be hit twice while they are not doing their discount spin dash, and that takes time. Follow that up with a wonderful Rampardos impression from Eric to knock down the next wall. Next, we descend to the bottom of the stage, using Shield Knight and Hawkeye to deal with three more enemies before reaching the lava pit. This is a one-hit kill for any Viking that touches the lava. The player will need to guide all three Vikings up to the top to pass safely. This can be tricky because only Yosemite Sam here can jump. The others need to fall at the proper time in order to get aboard a bubble. And this is where the game starts to feel unfair. Bubbles are completely new to the player, so introducing them over a lava pit is a mistake. I thought that the Viking would ride on top of the bubble, so I jumped early to get on top, sending Olaf to visit the volcano gods. The reason this feels unfair is because I can no longer beat the level. In order to complete a level, the player must get all three Vikings to the exit. If any viking is lost along the way, then the player must restart the level. You are allowed to experiment with the remaining vikings, so I soon realized that vikings ride inside of bubbles. At the top, a find the key puzzle begins. There are branching paths that the player can explore. One leads to a ghost type wall that is unaffected by my headbutt attack. Then there's a blue keyhole and finally a detour to a yellow key that leads to the blue key. Once the blue key is collected, the player can return to the blue lock, then attempt to collect the valuable item on the other side of the breakable blocks. But this turns out to be a trap for the player. After the blocks are gone, the ghost type wall will fall below. And if you're focusing on the shiny item, then no! No! it's back to the start again. No! Only after the player has successfully performed all these steps without losing a viking will the game allow passage to the next level. There are a few things that make this level feel unfair. First is the big setback if you lose a viking. As a first time player it took me about two and a half minutes to get through this first section and another minute to get back to the lava pit. That's because every time you start again you need to navigate all three vikings one at a time. So it's as if you're playing this part of the level three times on each restart. The second problem is that the level is the same every time you play it. The courses are designed with one solution in mind. I checked some speed runs to see if there were any shortcuts intended by the developers, but there were only skips and exploits discovered by players. My favorite is this run at Summer Games Done Quick, where the runner is playing the two-player mode with two controllers velcroed together so that he can control two Vikings at the same time. Awesome. 
This repetitive level design and lack of checkpoints makes the cavern feel like four smaller levels that must be cleared all in a row without losing a single viking in order to progress. In other platforming games, the player is sent back a reasonable distance, but in The Lost Vikings, getting sent back this far for one mistake feels very unfair. It feels like putting together a puzzle and mistakenly dropping a piece on the floor. Instead of finding that piece and continuing, Instead, I now need to take apart the entire puzzle and start over. It's not going to change how the puzzle pieces are assembled, so restarting the puzzle and reassembling the pieces that I've already put together feels like a punishment. Instead of attempting it again, I would rather clean up the puzzle and put it away. So let's go back and make some changes to the cavern so that it feels more fair. First, add in the checkpoints. The problem is that it takes two to three minutes to get back to where I was in order to make another attempt. By shortening that time, the loss of progress feels more reasonable. Second, remove the one-hit kill hazards and player traps. Instead, have those hazards take one health from that viking and reset them to the last point of solid ground they were on. The traps with their current design feel icky. The player doesn't learn anything new, instead they just feel salty. Games can trap the player and use trial and error to teach the player new ways to play the game, but if the game is going to trick the player into taking damage, the game needs to have almost no setback. Games like Celeste accomplish this by having frequent checkpoints and only setting the player back a few jumps before having them start again. This promotes trial and error and makes mistakes feel like a natural part of learning a game and not a punishment for trying to play it. These changes can both be implemented with a save state slash rewind feature. But the best solution is to redesign the stage so that it is different on a repeat playthrough. Then if the player needs to start from the beginning, there is something new to try. So let's add a new ice block to this stage. Let's put ice blocks over the lava pit so that the player has a safe space to learn how the bubbles work. These are connected to the ice blocks that will now replace the door with the blue lock. Finally, add ice blocks next to the ghost type door. This will be our tutorial. Now let's go back to when the game trapped me. This time, if I get stuck while trapped, I can see a caveman crash into this newly placed fireball statue. The caveman breaks the statue and is set on fire. I see the fiery caveman destroy the ice blocks and then fizzle out. Now when I restart the level, I have a new path I can take. Before, this extra caveman would guard a food pickup. But if I free the caveman, he will crash into this new fireball statue, be set on fire. Then if I guide the caveman to the ice blocks, they will be destroyed. This will expose the lava pit, but also open the blue lock so that the blue key is no longer needed, and I can skip this part of the stage. I've created a shortcut, but the player will likely only learn about that after they have already opened the path on a first playthrough. By changing the levels so that they are different on repeat playthroughs, it makes restarting this level or replaying the game much more enjoyable. To see this kind of masterclass level design in another puzzle platformer, check out my video on Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. This is my pick for the best game on that system. First, for how it would surprise the player. And second, for all the different ways that the levels could be played, the more that the player learned about the game's mechanics.